Bonjour, mino gishi bao again, Katie Nadej Nakas. Today I'm very excited because we are going to be learning all about a special type of butterfly. And to do this, I will be joined today on the show with three special guests. So I hope you enjoy it. Check it out. Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. Hi, Hi. thanks for having us. I'm so happy you guys could be on the show. Are you excited to be on YouTube? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. So I wanted to have you guys on the show today because I know you're, as a family, really interested in a certain type of butterfly. Do you want to tell me what type of butterfly you really like? Monarch butterfly. Oh, nice. And what do you like about them? They're very pretty and they just look cool. They are pretty, eh? What color are they, Cam? Orange, black, there's some white spots. Oh. Yeah, those are pretty. Hey, I forgot to ask you guys who you were. Shoot. Sorry, do you want to introduce yourselves? I'm Cameron. I'm Brock. And I'm Kelly. Hey. Okay, great. So you like monarch butterflies because they're orange and they're pretty. And um I want to ask you guys a little bit more about monarch butterflies, but first I want to ask your mom a question. Um, Kelly, I had heard that monarchs are considered pollinators and that they're really important in that respect, but I wasn't sure exactly what that meant. Could you tell me what a pollinator is? Well, a pollinator is an insect that carries pollen from one flower to another and it helps the plant to grow fruit and seeds. So without pollinators, we wouldn't have food, basically all of the food that we rely on. So pollinators are very important. Bees and other flies are also pollinators, but butterflies are because the monarch butterfly um, eats the nectar from flowers. And when it goes from one flower to the next, it carries the pollen and helps to pollinate all those different plants and flowers. Hmm. Oh, that's cool. So pollinators are really important to make sure that if somebody's growing vegetables or fruit or that they'll actually become vegetables and fruit and then we can eat them. Definitely. So um, also our monarch butterflies, I heard there's not a lot of them anymore. Is that true? Yeah. Um, Oh yeah. So guys, what's that called? Endangered. Like, what was that? Sorry? Endangered. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. So endangered means there's not a lot of them left. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you guys as a family are doing some really important things to help uh, protect monarch butterflies, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Brock, is there a certain kind of plant that you grow that helps monarch butterflies? Um, milkweed. Oh, so what is this picture of? Um, it's a picture of my mom and we're um, getting milkweeds for our um, caterpillars to eat. Yeah, because oh, so only, the only thing they eat is um, milkweed. Oh, so that's when, they, looks like. when they're caterpillars, that's the only thing they'll eat is yeah. the, the leaves of the milkweed. But when they're um butterflies, they only eat pollen. Okay, cool. So and this is what the milkweed flower looks like when it's blooming. Right? Yeah. And they oh, smell it. Really and this is me with a butterfly on my head. Oh, that's so cool. So Brock, how did you get a butterfly to land on your head? Um, it just lands on our head. We we brought it out to release it. Yeah. Because it just said like, came out of its yeah. process and its wings had yeah. dried and stuff. So we brought yeah. it we brought it outside and released it and just landed on our foreheads and yeah. Oh so. Cameron, that's really interesting what you said. Can you tell me more about that? You said you brought the butterfly outside and released it. What what do you mean by that? Well, they 
first you have to wait after they come out of their chrysalis you have to wait because their wings are really wet and stuff yeah you can do a butterfly and they're small and their bodies are pretty big and then you have to wait for that to that dry and then you bring them outside and let them go live in the wild and we see them like for another month just drinking out of some of our flowers yeah so maybe kelly you can explain to us how did you get them into your house exactly so we know where there is some milkweed that grows locally around here and we know where the yeah. milkweed is it's it happens to be along the train tracks yeah. the train so, spread it yeah. yeah so we go to the um spots where the milkweed grows and we usually around june usually around the first week of june and we look at the milkweed and we can see little tiny white eggs on the underside yeah. of the they're leaves they're really really tiny like that more than you can see it yeah and it's yeah. kind of shaped like a football yeah or we see tiny tiny caterpillars and they're yeah. very easy to spot because they're yeah. black and yellow yeah and we take those home and we put them in the cage. Cameron can show you the cage. It's really big. And we feed the caterpillars and we keep them safe in here. And then they grow until they're about the size of your pinky finger. Yeah. And, and they're also really fat. Yeah. <laughs> and they, they eat a lot. And, and poop a yeah. lot. Yeah. yeah. And then they turn into a chrysalis. And once they emerge as a butterfly, we release them back outside this one is a boy you could tell because of those little black spots right there girls you also have to clean the cage once a while and you do have to clean the cage brock yeah okay. because there's lots of poop and is that a lot of work to do that no, not really not really <laughs> yeah <laughs> easy for you to say <laughs> And I had a question, maybe Cameron, you might know. Um, how come you guys have to bring the butterflies or, or the caterpillars into your house? Like, well, why don't you just leave so them? So they the don't get eaten by like birds. Yeah, like birds and all yeah. that stuff. Like, Spiders. Yeah. yeah. And they and they just don't get eaten. So there's predators that eat the caterpillars and then... Yes. We have even more difficulty because we don't have many caterpillars and if a lot of them um, get eaten then we have less they butterflies. Also, they also um birds also eat butterflies yeah mm -hmm. yeah um, like hawks eagles, eagles. Mm. do you guys grow milkweed in your yard as well yeah, yes lots. it's really cool sometimes we didn't even like put them there and then you just go in their backyard and you look and yeah. sometimes you just see little eggs and caterpillar yeah and sometimes mm -hmm. chrysalis but outside chrysalises are like really hard to find yeah mm -hmm. yeah the one of the the best things you can do to help the monarch butterflies is just to plant milkweed and if you have milkweed in your yard somehow the butterflies will find it and come and lay eggs on it and where could you get, um, if you wanted to try planting milkweed, where could you get the seeds or could you get the plants from somewhere? You can buy them at the store. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you, if you know anyone who has milkweed, you can ask them because in the fall, each milkweed plant creates, the, after it's done blooming, creates this pod filled with seeds. And then you can just sprinkle the seeds in your garden and in the next okay. spring, the milkweed. So you could ask for seeds from a friend, uh, and I guess they do sell milkweed plants at lots of nurseries, don't they? Yes, yeah, you can also buy milkweed plants at greenhouses. Some people have just kind of like, just like bought milkweed plants and not knowing that they were for like monarch butterflies and stuff, but then just go outside one day and see caterpillars on the plants. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And the bees really like the milkweed flowers as well. Yeah, like one time we went to the train tracks and there was like a million bees just on this one tiny little milkweed. Yeah. Hmm. So Cameron, I'm curious and I, I thought you might know this. Could you tell me a little bit about 
I think I got a bit confused. I know first they start as eggs and then they um, go to caterpillars. And then what happens after the caterpillars? They go into a chrysalis, so they form this little thing and then it just hangs from the top of the cage. Okay. And they stay inside it for, um, about, for about two weeks and then they come out with butterflies. And you mentioned before, I think that when they come out, their wings are all wet. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you have to do? Do you have to try to dry up their wings or anything? We just put the cage in the sun and then it just yeah. takes like 30 minutes. Or, yeah. yeah, they just have yeah. to hang upside down and then slowly yeah. their wings kind of fill up and stiffen up and then they can fly. Yeah. And Brock, I wonder if you would know this. I heard that butterflies, if they're, you know, they're grown, um, they, they are where you live. And then in the fall time, they leave, right? Yeah. Where did they go? Um, to, hmm. Is it Mexico? Mexico? Yeah. Okay. How did they get there? Do they take a bus or? No, they just, they just, it, it's called a school of butterflies. They just fly together. Oh, really? that's so cool. So they fly all the way there. Yeah. yeah, it takes them about two months to get to Mexico. And what is that journey called? Um, I forgot. I took an M. Um, migrating. Oh, wow. That's so cool. And one interesting thing is that most butterflies, most monarch butterflies that we see up here, they only live about two weeks as an adult and then they lay their eggs and then they die. But the last generation, because over the summer, there'll be multiple generations, they'll lay their eggs, then new ones come out and then they'll lay their eggs and new ones come out. But the last ones in about September, they live up to seven months. So they migrate back to Mexico and then they spend the winter in Mexico just resting. Mm. And in the spring, they begin their migration again and it takes several generations to get back up to our area in the spring. Interesting. So the same butterfly that leaves Mexico in the spring and comes to Northwestern Ontario, it's not going to be the same exact butterfly. It'll be its relatives that actually make it. Yeah. 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 It'd be cool if there was one cool. that survived. Well, Thank you guys so much for sharing all of that information today. Uh, before we go, is there any other last important things you'd like to share? Um, I know how to say um, butterfly in native language. Oh, okay, great. How do you say that? It's, uh, I think it's like memangue or something. Yeah, it's memangue. Memangue. Cool. Thanks for teaching me that. You guys have taught me a lot today. It's been so great to have you on the show. Well, thank you. Yeah, well, thanks for coming. So it was great to see you guys and I will let you go so you can get back to enjoying your spring break. Okay, you thank too. You. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching the show today and thank you again to our special guests, Kelly, Cameron, and Brock. You guys sure taught me a lot about butterflies and I hope you all at home learned something too. So thanks for sharing your love of monarch butterflies. Have a great day, everyone. Mina wa